Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Mind, body, soul, spirit. We have to remember that we're all of them and we need to work on all of them. And today I was kind of thinking about the body and I was thinking how Mary, full of grace, must have been absolutely gorgeous, almost glowing with beauty. There's such a thing called countenance that when people get holier, they actually change. Their face changes, it brightens up, your skin tone changes. When you go through deliverance and you get all those evil spirits out of you and you cut all those soul ties with people that you've had intimate relations with and you also get all that occult stuff out and then you continue to seek for God's Holy Spirit inside you to sanctify you and your life is changing, you're changing, your physical body is the manifestation of the spirits that are in you. When I was sinning, When I cut myself off from God, I didn't have God's spirit within me. I had evil spirits within me. I remember someone said to me once, wow, I can really tell in your countenance that you're changing. And I didn't even know what the countenance was at that time. (laughs) So it's really important to know that the spirit within you actually manifests in your body. It's really cool. And as I'm going through this true devotion by St. Louis de Montfort, I'm realizing how much I have not really prayed to Mary and the Holy Spirit. So let me go take a little bit of a sidetrack here and talk a little bit a little bit more about Mary. So when you're praying to Mary, We are asking for her to go to Jesus for us. We are not worshiping to her. The Hail Mary itself is biblical. It comes right from what St. Gabriel said in Luke. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. And yes, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We are asking her at the end, pray for us. Please, we need you to pray for us. And by the way, she is also the mediatrix of grace. She is a sinless human being. God filled her with grace, her immaculate conception from the very beginning. And of course he would do that. Why not? That's the mother of God. That is the vessel That is the tabernacle of where God was. She needed to be perfect. And so we need to ask her to help us by divvying out that grace. And when you go through a consecration, which is this 33 days that I'm going through in this book, we basically give Mary all of our deeds and our works and we give her all all of our material possessions, and we basically say, Mary, you mediatrix of grace, you take everything. And with Jesus, you do what you want so that we don't 
get attached to our deeds and we can't say, oh, we did this. What are we going to get in return? We just do the things and we offer them to Mary. And Mary and Jesus take care of the rest. They know what to do. They know when the graces need to be divvied out. So that's the idea of her role now. And we were given to her at the cross. Behold your mother. And John took her into his home. And she took on all of the children in the world, right? Took them as her own. And so many people deny her, ignore her, hate her. There are many Christian denominations who despise her. And yet, she's the perfect, sinless mother of God. I don't know how anyone could despise her or be indifferent to her, which was me. So there's a list of people, devotions, well, not really devotions, but they call them false devotions to Our Lady. And I have so many of them. I've been falsely devoting myself to her. And this book really kind of slapped me in the face. So there's a scrupulous devotee who are those who fear to dishonor the son by honoring the mother to a base one in elevating the other. So I actually took that to my spiritual director. I said, I really have a tough time praying to Mary because I feel like I'm ticking Jesus off. Like I don't want to pray to her more. And of course, what does he say? He says, that's the devil working on you. He said, no one loves Mary more than Jesus. You're not going to make him mad by loving his mother. So if you fear that by praying to her, that you're dissing Jesus, don't. Don't worry about that. There's another one that says external devotees are persons who make all devotions to our Blessed Lady consist in outward practice. They have no taste except for the exterior of this devotion because they have no interior spirit of their own. They will say quantities of rosaries with the greatest precipitation. They will hear many masses distractedly, and they will go without devotion to processions. They'll enroll themselves in things, and it's all outward, but they have no real internal prayer life. I actually coached someone who went to daily mass and didn't pray didn't really pay attention to daily mass. And it's a big difference because when you go to receive the Holy Eucharist, and if your disposition isn't of of worship and also of you giving yourself up as a sacrifice through Jesus to the Father, and if you're just going to go, quote unquote, to check the box, or if you're saying your rosaries, but you're not into them at all, It's like all the pagans with many words. It's all exterior and it's false. Here's another one. Presumptuous devotees are sinners abandoned to their passions or lovers of the world who under the fair name of Christians and clients of our Blessed Lady conceal pride, avarice, impurity, drunkenness, anger, swearing, detraction, injustice, or some other sin. And they sleep in peace in the midst of their bad habits, without doing any violence to themselves to correct their faults, under the pretext that they are devout to the Blessed Virgin. Again, false. Let's read the next one. The ink, that was me, right? For a while there, I was living in sin. I was getting to know Mary. I was a complete falsity in that regard. Okay. The inconstant devotees are those who are devout to our blessed lady by intervals and whims. Huh? Sometimes they're fervent and sometimes they're lukewarm. And that was me. Another false devotee. Oh, here's the hypocritical. We still have to mention the false devotees to our blessed lady who are the hypocritical critical devotees who cloak their sins and sinful habits under her mantle in order to pass in the eyes of men for what they are not. 
and there are also the interested devotees who have recourse to Our Lady to only gain some lawsuit or to avoid some danger or to be cured of some illness or for some other similar necessity without which they would forget her altogether. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. Oh, the scrupulous, the exterior, the presumptuous, the inconstant, the hypocritical, and the interested devotees. And I don't want to be any of them, but I, I think, have been all of them. I want interior and exterior devotion to Our Lady. Because otherwise it's just false. And she knows it. So we ought to know it. We ought to think, how do I think and love and act with the Blessed Mother, the Mother of God? Because we do need her help. And I just feel like she's, she's opening my eyes to things that I need to work on. And today was mind, body, soul, and spirit. So I am going to be praying more to Mary and her beloved spouse, the Holy Spirit within me. I'm still going to pray to Jesus. I'm still going to use Jesus' name to deliver spirits when I'm going through the day or thanking him. But I've been adding Mary as well. Thank you, Jesus and Mary. Because I know that they're inseparable. In this book, it says you cannot separate Mary and Jesus. It's like trying to take the heat away from the sun or the light away from the sun. It, you can't. They're together. When you listen to any exorcist who's ever done any work, Father Ripperger being one, he says that the demons know exactly who Mary is. And by the way, they go into that in this book as well. They hate her because she is a creature of God and has stepped on the ancient serpent's head. And when we invoke her name, it's almost as if we're invoking Jesus's because those two are darn near one. Jesus was born and created in her womb. He has part of Mary in him, in his physical body, as do we with our mother. Her DNA is in us. And I believe our DNA, I think I read something in some medical journal, that our DNA is in our moms. The beautiful thing of creation. So I'm just saying that this true devotion book, regardless of whether you go through the consecration at the end or not, is an eye opener for me about Mary and why we should be devoted to her and why we should be praying to her so that A, she can take our requests to Jesus, pretty them up, hold, make them holy, right? Purify them because it's going to come from her not our selfish little things that we want. And then if we give it all to her, then we're trusting her and Jesus to do the right thing, to do what we need, not what we want, right? What is best for us. And know that she's our mom. She's our perfect spiritual mother. And she does deserve our love. And she's out there constantly asking people to pray for sinners. She's a prayer. She is a holy woman. She wants us to pray and to run to her and to be little children with her. And she will take all of our requests to Jesus and together they will do God's will. That's all she's ever done. She didn't have a will of her own. She absolutely lived in the Spirit of God. Her spouse was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit put Jesus in her body. I mean, and then, whether you know this or not, Jesus learned from her and was obedient to her throughout his entire life. 
he lived with Mary and Joseph for 30 years before his ministry started. And remember, his ministry started when Mary asked him, or she didn't ask him, she said, they have no wine. And he was like, woman, what do you have to do with me? It's not my hour yet. Like, if he changed the water to wine, that means his ministry was starting. And it wasn't supposed to start at that time, but he did it anyway because his mother asked. So that's just like us. We're the ones that are saying, Mary, there's no wine. Go get Jesus. Mary, I need your help. Go get Jesus. And so he was obedient to her for 30 years. Think about that. How many of you lived in your parents' house and were obedient to them up till you're 30 years old? I was out of the house at 26. And I wasn't obedient to my parents even when I was 14, 15, 16. But this is the deal. This is what we should be mimicking is Jesus and his devotion and obedience to Mary. And those two are inseparable. You will never out love Jesus's love for Mary and vice versa, Mary's love for Jesus. So don't let any of those false things be how you devote yourself to Mary. I'm only halfway through the book. I'm in part two, and I can't wait to get back into it. But I am doing the consecration. And it's not that long, so I pray the rosary. And I'm looking forward to it. It's weird. <laughs> I'm truly looking forward to it because the words just make sense to me now. They make different. It's almost like the 18 inches from my head to my heart. Mary is moving into my heart, and I know that that's the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying to the Holy Spirit, please help me love Mary more. And so I remember back in the day when I would get up in the morning, it would be dark. I would light my candle, and I would put my left hand out and my right hand out, and I would say, Mary, take my left. Holy Spirit, take my right guide me through this prayer, tell me what I need to know and hear. But on top of that, also guide me through this day. And I stopped doing that, but that's back in my prayer time now. Because there's no two better people, the Holy Spirit and Mary, the spouses of each other, to lead me to Jesus throughout the day. And to sanctify me, that's what the Holy Spirit does. So going back to mind, body, soul, spirit, <clears throat> I'm hearing God saying, take better care of your physical body. Treat it better with food and exercise so that you can be more loving and have the zeal for life. Because I know darn well that when I'm working out and I'm eating better, I have more energy. I am ready to get out and get up and go face the world. I'm not dragged down with some extra weight or not enough strength. The weather's getting better. It's a beautiful day here. It's been, ah, we just can't break into spring. It's been like 40, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and it hasn't been warm weather yet, but it's coming. And I know that I'm going to want to be outside and doing things, and I need some muscle. I need to be in more, in a better shape. And I want the Holy Spirit to change my body, to make it all that it can be. Because the Spirit inside us manifests itself. That's the difference between someone who's holy and someone who's not. When you have the Spirit of God in you and you're in a state of grace, your countenance changes. I can't remember if I said this or not, but someone did say to me, gosh, your countenance is changing. And at that time, I didn't even know what countenance was. Meaning your complexion, you're brighter, you're glowing kind of, that kind of deal. When you're filled with the Spirit of God. I think about that when I went to confession and I unloaded my whole life worth of stuff 
and how I felt. And that honestly was the Holy Spirit outpouring in me. God was pouring out of my body and my mind and my heart. I was going to work the next day and I'm jumping around and skipping around. I'm so happy. People are looking at me different. They're asking me if I was on a diet or if I was working out. One woman asked me if I was pregnant. She's like, you're glowing. So when we think about the spirit within us, it does manifest in our bodies. And I want to be a glowing body of Christ. So let's take a moment and look at our mind, body, soul, and spirit. Let's ask Mary and the Holy Spirit to bring the truth to us so that we know what we should be working on, because it's definitely prayer, and it is definitely, probably, taking care of your body better, moving it, strengthening it. We need spiritual muscle workout and we need physical muscle workout. And again, I just hear that being put on my heart in prayer, but also lately to show me how much of a false devotee I have been to Mary and that she deserves so much better. And that with her and the Holy Spirit, my life will be more filled with grace and hopefully more filled with the spirit so that I can live holier. Oh, it's amazing. Mary, 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 my book, second, third chapter, fourth chapter. I don't know. My, there's a chapter in my book where I say, Mary, 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 like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha didn't understand what Mary's role was in the church or my life. And through this book, true devotion to Mary, by St. Louis de Montfort. I am now seeing how wrong I was, how I was indifferent to her, how I decided to love her when I decided to love her, when I needed her. And it's changing me. And I'm only on, I just started Thursday, it's Wednesday, tomorrow will be day seven of the 33 days. And I'm already seeing Mary coming from my head down to my heart. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. All righty, everyone. Check if you're a false devotee of Mary. And ask the Holy Spirit and Mary together in prayer, what should I work on, mind, body, soul, and spirit? And it may be a couple of things. But just take it day by day. Don't get into this big thing. Oh, I got a diet. I have to lose X amount of pounds, blah, 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 blah. No, just take each decision as it comes. Do I need this cookie? And then make it an offering. (laughs) I'm not going to eat this cookie. I'm going to offer this up for my husband. Or I'm going to offer this up, Mary, this is yours. This is a good deed, a sacrifice. I'm giving it to you. You and Jesus figure out where to go with it. We can make offerings and pray for certain people and pray for ourselves. But when you consecrate yourself to Mary, you let it all go to her. So she divvies up grace as it's needed. But when we consecrate ourselves to her, she also is head over heels for us and pours out her grace even more. So don't think that, oh, that's, you know, my... Offering up this cookie is going to go to some kid in China. (laughs) What good is it for me? It doesn't work that way. She is even more attentive to us because of our love for her. All righty, everyone. That's a long one, but it's intense. And it's really overwhelmingly, I don't know what the word, I'm, I'm losing... I'm overwhelmed by what God is showing me and how I really haven't been devoting anything to her, how my rosaries are shallow, how really I think about her was wrong, and how I should because Jesus obeyed and lived with her 
and they are together, how I should continue to go to her because she has got my best interests in mind and her role is only to take me to Jesus and to take my prayers to Jesus. It's really cool. Okay. I love you all. Get on out there and face the world. Ask the Holy Spirit to sanctify you. Ask Mary to pour out her graces. And ask Jesus to help you love Mary as he does. Don't ever think that you're taking love away from God because Mary is full of grace and God is with her <laughs> literally, figuratively, spiritually. They are almost one. Remember, you can't take the heat out of the sun, the light out of the sun. You can't take Mary and Jesus and separate them. And all of the evil spirits, I don't know if I went down this path, know it. They know Mary. They hate her name. They hate when her name is invoked. So there's power there as well. They don't want us to be devoted to Mary and have a devotion to her. I think that's why all the other Christian faiths who are indifferent to Mary or who hate Mary, those are evil, right? Because they're heretics, right? They're not following the church. I mean, there's dogma with Mary. It's crazy. Again, truth being shown all the time. All right, everyone, find something more with Mary, the Holy Spirit, Jesus and the Father. Let's throw in St. Joseph. If you haven't consecrated yourself to him, you might want to get that book and you might look at St. Joseph totally different. I did consecrate myself to him a couple of years ago, but <clears throat> I don't pray to him much anymore either. But right now I'm focusing on Mary because sometimes I get myself all geeked up and I pile too much on and then I don't have the time, right? I'm already like an hour's worth of prayer. Keep dumping more stuff on me and then I will fail and then I will feel bad and then I will regress and that's not good. So every day, the next decision, that's basically how we should live. I love you. Have a blessed and inspired day.